This guy's in trouble. You use the barbells. I said, now all you have to do is look at the boxers. This young girl from Italy, a very a champion boxer, she got hit so hard, she didn't know what the hell hit her. It's a person that transitioned. He was a good, he was a good male boxer. Yeah. He was a good male boxer. And she didn't even go down. He hit her with two jabs and she said, I'm out. This guy too. If, if somebody's gonna try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go f yourself. But go f yourself. <laughs> is that clear? I, I hope it is. Hey, Bob, if you're in the audience. And her. JK Rowling the author of the Harry Potter books. And him. I just gotta be careful to not like disrespect the culture. Japan is all about the respect. There's a trove when it comes to this guy's idiocy. Yet what do they all have in common? Uh, رئيس أمريكا السابق ما أغنى رجل في العالم إلى ماسك تحدث عنك تحدث عليا إلى ماسك ترامب هذا الشيء اللي اللي أثر فيا ما نكذبش عليك أثر فيا They relentlessly attacked Imani Khalif of Algeria the gold medal winning boxer at this year's 2024 Paris Games They said that she is trans She is not ضرة كبير now here's what I like. Instead of just sitting back and taking it, she's going on offense. Khalif, with Paris-based attorney Nabil Baudi, filed a criminal complaint over alleged acts of aggravated cyber harassment against the Olympic champion. Elon Musk and J.K. Rowling were named. Now Musk is not a fan of trans people. Just listen to this interview he did with another transphobe, Jordan Peterson, where he talks about his own child. So my son Xavier is dead, He's killed by the woke mind virus. It happened to one of my, my older boys. I was essentially tricked into uh, signing documents uh, for one of my older boys, Xavier. Uh, this is before I had really any understanding of what was going on and the, we had COVID going on and so uh, there was a lot of confusion um, and um, you know, I was told, oh, he, you know, Xavier might commit suicide if, if he that was a That was a lie right from the outset. Yeah, you know, it wasn't explained to me that puberty blockers are actually just sterilization drugs. Um, so, um, anyway, uh, and so I lost my son, essentially. Uh, so, you know, they, uh, they call it dead naming for a reason. Yeah, I... All right, I'm, so they, the reason it's called dead naming is because... Uh, your son is dead. He dead names and misgenders his child. With Khalif, Musk would amplify Riley Gaines's message. Gaines, a fifth place finisher, has used transphobia to make a fortune in right wing circles. Donald Trump would post a photo from the fight, writing the following I will keep men out of women's sports. He has no control over the International Olympic Committee. Logan Paul added, this is the purest form of evil unfolding right before our eyes. A man was allowed to beat up a woman on a global stage, crushing her life's dreams while fighting for her deceased father. This delusion must end. He'd later delete the post, put up another, and the opening word was oopsie. His words. Rowling would get in it too. This piece of video comes from Mike Figueredo of The Humanist Report. But she's not a man. She is a cis woman and has always been a woman, has always identified as a woman. Her Algerian passport says she's female, and that's really important because trans identities are literally criminalized in Algeria. But those inconvenient facts have not stopped people like J.K. Rowling from knowingly spreading this lie about her. For example, on August 1st, J.K. Rowling tweeted, Could any picture sum up our new men's rights movement better? The smirk of a male who knows he's protected by a misogynist sporting establishment enjoying the distress of a woman he's just punched in the head and whose life's ambitions he just shattered. But it didn't stop there because she kept 
tweeting lies about Imani Khalif. She retweeted people who continued to call her a man six days after she initially called her a man, and she made additional tweets insinuating that Imani Khalif was indeed a man who was beating up a woman. So after helping to spread the rumor that Imani Khalif was a man, J.K. Rowling continued to tweet about her a week later while still insisting that she was a man, even though that had been thoroughly debunked. Now, that right there is textbook defamation. And over the last couple of days, J.K. Rowling has conspicuously gone silent. And now we know why, don't we? The Paris Prosecutor's Office, the National Center for the Fight Against Online Hatred, released this statement. And I will read it to you all. On August the 13th, the National Center for the Fight Against Online Hatred contacted the Central Office for the Fight Against Crimes Against Humanity and Hate Crimes to conduct an investigation into the counts of cyber harassment due to gender, public insult because of gender, public incitement to discrimination and public insult because of origin. Via Al Jazeera, the claim was filed against social media platforms which included Elon Musk's Twitter, and not against a specific individual, a common formulation under French law that leaves it up to investigators to determine which person or organization may have been at fault. Her coach would add, the boxer's complaint in France should serve as a lesson in defending the rights and honor of athletes in Algeria and around the world. All those involved will be prosecuted for violating her dignity and honor. The attacks were designed to break her and undermine her morale. Thank God she triumphed to, of course, a gold medal. Bowdy would later state, what we're asking is that the prosecution investigates not only these people, Musk, Rowling, Donald Trump, Riley Gaines even, Chaya Raychik even, but whoever it feels necessary, if the case goes to court, they will stand trial. Mitch Jackson, a California-based attorney, would give his two cents on Musk's platform. When you're as powerful as J.K. Rowling or Elon Musk, your words carry weight. And when those words cross the line into cyber harassment, they become more than just speech. They're weapons. This is the heart of the criminal complaint filed in France. The complaint targets not just these famous figures, but anyone hiding behind pseudonyms who thought they could get away with venomous attacks. It's a bold move, especially considering the global reach and influence of the accused, but it's necessary. When all is said and done, I believe the French legal system isn't just dealing with trolls. It's taking a stand against high-profile individuals who amplify false facts and hate. I think we all need to ask ourselves, when does free speech become a crime? And when will the law start holding even the biggest names accountable? This case could be that tipping point. Quite honestly, and I have to double down on this, it is good that she is doing this because this entire panic showed so much to me. The first is how we are surrounded by idiots. How they believe by taking a look at a person they know that said person is not a woman. They know that there are trans people in boxing. They know. And what it proved to me is this media bubble that we're in is a reactionary one that is led profusely by the right. Let's be honest about it. How many times do I, do Haas, do the main TYT show, do Leftist Mafia, do Humanist Report, all of these, Kyle, Kal all of us, Media Matters, I mean, Daily Beast, the list goes on and on and on. How many outlets have to fact check something that the right says that we all know is out of left field and wrong. They lead the conversation. They steer us down these paths where we have to put up the detour signs for anybody that'll pay attention instead of going down a winding road to hell. It's so frustrating. Like, this is what we're dealing with every single 
day. This is what the right has become. This is probably what they always were. But it's only gotten worse. And now, with them steering the conversation, we have to hear about Mr. Potato Head. We have to hear about how M&Ms are too sexy. We have to hear about Elon dead naming and misgendering his child because of the woke mind virus. It's pathetic where we have come. It's pathetic where we are right now. And yet we continually have to do it because if we don't, then it goes unfettered and it goes unchecked. And it's very frustrating. The other part is I am really glad that she's doing this. I just am. Because what it proves is you cannot just rattle off things that are so illogical, wrong, not factual, incoherent, and get away with it. It has to be backed up. And this can't be backed up. She has gone through hell because of these people who are not only some of the most popular, but also some of the most powerful people. Elon Musk is the richest man in the world. Amplify the hell out of this. Donald Trump claims to be a billionaire. Former president of the United States running on this platform amplified it as well. And this boxer is saying, no, no. You guys put me through this when you are completely in the wrong. Let's file a lawsuit and let's hold people accountable. And quite frankly, I am all here for it. Skip Bayless, a career that at least on ESPN and Fox Sports appears to be completely done. However, there is one prominent figure who wanted to have a go at him. A number of years ago, um, I was on a show with Stephen A. and Skip Bayless. And both we, of them. Yeah, both of them, yeah. on their show. Yeah. I was working at ESPN doing yeah. NFL. I would do uh, Mike Greenberg after doing my NFL stuff. And then I would come on there because Stephen A. and I were friends. Um, I didn't know Skip personally. And I'm going to be honest with you. Skip Thank Bayless you. is not one of my favorite people. Let's pause here. This is NFL legend, two-time All-Pro, number 80 retired by the Minnesota Vikings, Chris Carter. Carter went on to be an NFL Hall of Famer, then joined the major networks, the four-letter network of ESPN, Fox Sports. And he would speak on this with the fully loaded podcast. I'm on there doing the show. I do the show and everything. And then all of a sudden, this is when the Tebow phenomenon was going on. Mm -hmm. And he was a huge Tim Tebow guy. You know, this guy is this. I this, remember this. it. Dude. Okay. Oh. So I come on there on a Monday. And, you know, we're trading barbs and everything. We go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then I just level set it and was like, listen, if throwing the football is important in the NFL, Tim Tebow will never be a starting quarterback in the NFL. Yep. So he got defensive, and then he came back and said, well, that's why you didn't win a Super Bowl. Okay. So what would you say? Which got nothing to do with nothing. Let's pause once more here. Do we notice the trend? You should. Remember when Shannon Sharp and Skip Bayless butted heads? You're probably thinking, which time? I'll tell you. The one time that Sharp felt a dig from Bayless was, quote, personal, was when he brought up, Bayless this is, how Sharp, who is a Hall of Famer at the tight end position, is nowhere in the same stratosphere as Tom Brady, a quarterback. It was unnecessary. It was low. It did not pertain to the topic they were discussing. All in all, it's Skip Bayless to a T. And Sharp would say, quote, that's what you do. Every time I call something into question, I'm jealous, Skip. 
I did what I did. You make it seem like I was a bum. I'm in the effing Hall of Fame. I got three Super Bowls. You take personal shots. You would take a personal shot at me to say this man is better than me because I say he's playing bad this year. He was, by the way. You would disrespect me to support him. The Sharp would remove his glasses in disbelief where Bayless demanded he put them back on his head and said he was in fact the one who was being disrespected. He'd lash out at Sharp again, saying, quote, it's beneath your dignity. Wow. This is just who Skip is. Again, we have a pattern. More from Carter. We went to commercial break. So you didn't say nothing before commercial. He just said his... No, no, no. I... Okay. Come here. I took my earpiece out, yeah. and I told him, I'll never be on your show again. Yeah. And if you ever say anything like that to me again, I'll punch you right in the face. Good for you. Pause again. We have another example of a pro athlete knowing of other athletes who wanted to have a go at Skip Bayless. Recall this. I just feel of late he's been very, very, very disrespectful and out of pocket, and that's normal, but he's been that way to Shannon. And you can see Shannon bite his tongue. Uh, you can see him, you know, do deep breaths from not jumping across that table and wringing that man's neck. But I think Skip's day is coming. And it may not be from a, a firing standpoint because, you know, we know white men in this profession can kind of get away and do with, you know, what they want. Just is what it is. Um, and it makes good TV. Remember, controversy sells. So, of course, Fox are gonna wanna keep those type of ratings. This is, of course, Matt Barnes, NBA veteran, co-host of All the Smoke, with Steven Jackson, and has worked for various networks. And he really went into depth about how he kind of saved Skip. Shannon's had a lot of love or does have a lot of love for dude, but you could even see Shannon's fed up. And someone's gonna end up hurting Skip because his ego, his arrogance, his disrespect has kind of always been on this level, but now it's, it, it, I think it's going to a new level and, and now he's disrespecting his co-host and, and, and Shannon and, and again someone you know they've had a great working relationship over the years but this dude Skip is all bad and, and, and he thinks that he could say and do what he wants and there isn't going to be any repercussions and there may not be no repercussions uh, from his job but someone is going to run up on Skip and hurt this man again a history <laughs> Carter would then discuss how some years later, after he would leave ESPN and Bayless would make his way to Fox Sports 1 with a humongous bloated contract, he knew the person that was doing the hiring over there. Thus, they had this discussion. Do you have any problem with him? I said, I don't have no problem mm -hmm. with him. No. I don't have no problem with him Pay at all. Me, I'm good. No. Well, we talk to him. He doesn't have a problem with you. Why would he? Yeah. Why would he have a problem with me? Mm -hmm. So I didn't, I had very little interaction with him when I went to Fox, but I knew that um, it's like playing in a card game that the deck is tricked up. Mm. Okay, so number one thing you should know about Skip Bayless and some of the programming, the way that it was done at ESPN and at Fox, I'm going to say this, that it's a form of wrestling. Really? Okay. Yeah, you, well, you know who's going like to win. It. You know who's okay. going to win. Yeah. Yeah, it's pre yeah, it's predetermined, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And a lot of the arguments and everything are either predetermined mm -hmm. or assigned. You're going to win this one. And everything is slanted in Skip and Stephen A's favor. Yeah. They pick the subjects, mm -hmm. and they pick what side they going to take. Then you got to defend the other one. <laughs> Carter would go on to say in this interview that he never thought Bayless was authentic and thought that he should never take him seriously. Another theme amongst many. Meanwhile, from Michael McCarthy of Front Office Sports, don't cry for Bayless, he would write. He made millions over the career, over his career rather, for ripping LeBron James, you know, playing up Tebow mania, 
as the second coming and many other absurd things. But he also helped save the careers of both Stephen A. Smith and Shannon Sharp, plucking them both off the scrap heap when they were at the nadir of their TV careers. Ultimately, Bayless made a lot of people a lot of money, including himself, like him or hate him. He changed sports TV. I have some thoughts on this. The end of the Bayless-Sharp feud also shows how looks can be deceiving. When Sharp was pushed out of Fox Sports 1 in 2023, Bayless appeared to be the winner. After all, the execs sided with him. Instead, the decision ended up spelling the end of Skip Bayless's run at that network. Without Shannon Sharp, Undisputed's audience fell apart. Sometimes those episodes, those live shows, had 50,000 people. In comparison, First Take has about 400,000, more than 400,000. And the Bayless show never recovered. There were other reports as well that Bayless was ticked at being pushed out from McCarthy once more. So why didn't Bayless address it on Friday's show? I'm hearing the proud Bayless was so disappointed at being pushed out of the network he helped build that he passed on the chance to address his departure. Bayless may also blame FS1's execs rather than himself for not fixing the feud with Shannon before it got out of control, say some sources. So let's work our way backwards. Skip is going to address this because he is a complete workaholic. He is going to go all in on the Skip Bayless show, YouTube, podcast, what have you. His agents are probably going to push this as it's going to be his main focus. That's why it's going to be even better because he's not going to have two shows, doing two shows at once between Fox Sports 1 obligations and then his own personal show. He is going to talk about this in depth because as we have seen over the years, Stephen A. Smith cannot stop talking about Max Kellerman. He brings it up every time he gets. And there are so many, myself included, who take the bait. And we are also the ones who are saying, stop talking about it. Max Kellerman can't say anything. You are punching at a defenseless fighter. Yet it's picked up by many other outlets. We have seen how Shannon Sharp has talked about him leaving Skip Bayless and Fox Sports, how he felt disrespected, and he's peeling back the curtain slowly but surely because we are interested in what happened the day-to-day. There's so much information that we don't have right now, so any little cookie crumb they give us, we eat up. With that being said, Skip is going to go all in on his show, and the first episode is going to be lashing out at Fox Sports 1 or praising them and giving us some of those crumbs as well. The other parts of this, and I need to be very clear, I'm not a fan of debate stuff. I used to be. I've grown completely out of it. And as I have studied this more and more, I do believe that it has led to the downfall of sports media. I believe that journalism was ruined because of hot takes, because we lived in an era of pure speculation, saying the most outlandish BS driven thing in order to drive clicks. And what does that do? It then goes into many others who are reading journalists that are accredited, award-winning, respectful, authentic, fantastic, integrity driven then being driven out of the industry because then what does that do? It props up more people doing video, more people firing off hot takes. Oh, can you believe what streamer XYZ123 said? Not a shot at streaming. I'm just being clear. I'm standing up for the journalists who actually do the work. So like the whole thing about like, yeah, he got people paid. True, he did get people paid the wrong way. He also, you could say, launched his career by claiming that Troy Aikman was gay in a book. And I'm sorry, he said, oh, well, this is a rumor that I heard. I don't know if it's true, but I'm going to write about it, and I'm going to sell my book as having that information, which is crazy. You wonder why Troy Aikman wants nothing to do with him. It is a rather weird way to go out, though. Because Bayless has been a staple for so many years. And the fact that he just went into the sunset without even saying a word was a little odd. But I do believe that he's going to address it on his show. So there you have it. Chris Carter wanted to fight him. Other athletes have wanted to fight him. Kind of says a lot about your character and who you are if you have that many people against you.